tonight on The Prophet. My chicken is badass. When you are a Southern woman, Can, oh, yes, it is all about the food. <laughs> a close-knit Kentucky family has created a popular barbecue concept. Welcome to Lyle's Barbecue. Would you like to try a sample of our famous pulled pork? Expanding from a roadside stand to a sit-down restaurant and a food court. Y'all want some barbecue today? But they're starting to realize that they're chasing different goals. My personal dream is to work in a giant skyscraper running a really big company. If I can't help Lyles understand where they want to go and how they're going to get there. Don't tell me that it's because of me that we're not out there. Their bright future will go up in smoke. Leaving would be bailing on them. I can't do that. I don't know how I'm going to get to where I'm going. That breaks my heart. I don't know what to do. Over the last several years, I've heard from thousands of businesses looking for help, literally thousands. But never before have I encountered a situation quite like this one. Because while Lyle's Barbecue did indeed apply for help with their business, one of the owners, the son Chandler, also applied for a job with one of my companies. As far as all of them know, Chandler included, I'm just here as a potential investor. Oh, hey. How's it going? How are you? I'm good. Chandler Lyles. Chandler, I'm Marcus. Nice, nice to meet to you. Meet you. Yeah. So that's where Lyles comes from. It's our last name, yes, sir, yeah. Is this the main location? This is, yep. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm Jennifer. Jennifer, yes. nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. So I was asking questions. What's the number one item ordered? Pulled pork. No doubt. No doubt. OK, so whose recipes are these? And who's in charge of what? She's the art, and I'm really the business side of it, right? Got your pulled pork right here, your tri-tip, and then your sliced turkey. OK. This is the pulled pork? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That pulled pork was really good. Good. Amazing. Good. That's the difference with our meats and what we do. We don't slice anything. We don't pull anything. We don't do anything to it until you order. And that maintains the moisture. That's and smart. It it's just the best. What do you love about making things from scratch? I think that way too much is processed nowadays. There is no difference between chain to chain to chain because everything comes off of a truck and everybody, they go home and they eat boxes of mac and cheese or whatever. And this is somewhere that they can come and they can sit down and they can eat the same way that I did growing up. If you're gonna come in and spend your hard earned money with us, it should be for something that you actually enjoy. And you're 100% right. I love the passion and the commitment that she has to what she makes with her hands. You wanna invest in people? You invest in people that have passion like that. I guess my position is I'm just trying to find a way to do that super high quality, responsibly, as we grow. Like, well, what do you, you mean, know? as you grow? I mean, we need more locations. Why? Because we've got to achieve some sort of scale. Because even though it is a little riskier to go to another store, it creates cash flow stability. I think about 100 stores in more densely populated areas. I don't think we can do enough in sales out of here to support two families. I'm seeing the first conflict with Chandler wanting to open up stores all over the world and mom falling in love with what she's making in Lexington, Kentucky. I don't know how those two worlds could actually come together. How are you, sir? I'm Marcus. Yeah, nice to meet you. What is your uh, name? Greg. Greg, nice yeah, to meet yeah. you. You got a nice family. Well, thank you. I'm proud of them. And what is your role? They accuse me all the time, Marcus, of going rogue. So what are examples of going rogue? We tried this mall location and then it's slow. Well, the mall was my ideal I got us into. It turned out to be a crap show. Oh, is it losing money? Yes. I'm in charge in here for okay. the most just, part. Just thought we'd clear that up again. <laughs> right, right. It's clear to me that the three of them are not on the same page, and they're all working in different directions. And it's clear to me that nobody is taking the lead on solving the problems that are in front of them. Hey. All right. How are Welcome you, in. Good to see you again. How are you? Good. This is the mall food court here. Yeah. How come you didn't light your sign? It's what we thought was affordable at the time, but we know we got to get a lighted sign. Here's the weird thing. Menu board here, but not at the restaurant. Right. So why did you do the menu here? I mean, there's really no other way to order. They, they don't really have a place to put the menus for them to come and pick up. And we signed the lease, and we had two weeks to open. Were you not in favor of it? Neither one of them was in favor yeah. of it, Marcus. And why'd you do it? To me, it was a good idea to see if we could incubate our concept in the mall. We know we have a good product. It's just there's some core thing missing that we're just not seeing. We need somebody to come in and help us and tell us, this is what you're doing wrong. This is how you fix it. This is how we go forward.
I've thought about it, and I do want to do a deal with this family, but it's going to be totally different than normal because the family members all want different things for the business. Well, you know, I had a chance to think about, you know, what our relationship could look like. Mm -hmm. What I left really excited about were the things that you had created. And so what I'd like to do is propose us getting into business together on the products that you've designed and come up with. Because mm -hmm. that's really your, your sauce collection is sort of a sampling of American barbecue. Mm -hmm. So my offer is to invest $100,000 I don't want any of the money to go into your main location. The mall is actually the one space that I think you got to perfect. It probably wouldn't take more than ten dollars or $15,000 to take the front of that and get it right. Sure. I mean, and really, ultimately, you're doing it for branding purposes, and it should make a little scratch. And when the lease is up, you make a decision. Yeah. Right. And then put the rest of that money into exploring how do you take the products that you have and what actually can be scaled. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm going to put the money up on those things, I would want to make the lion's share of the profit, probably 60, 65% of it. Something you want to try? Yes. We're in business We're in together? Business. We have a deal. OK. Bye. Hey, it's good to see you again. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Let's get a beer. I think my mom and dad would be a lot less stressed if they just had one store to worry about. And my mom went to work there every day and got to do her thing. I don't think she'd ever tell you that because she wants to look out for me, but I think that's what she would want. I don't know, now I feel bad. Why? Because my ambition is so different. I may have put pressure on them. I didn't want to put on them. What's your dream? My personal dream is to, like, work in a giant skyscraper, running a really big company. You know, I had started to apply for jobs. And like, honestly, I even at one point had an interview with ML Foods. I now know more clearly why Chandler applied for that job with me. I think he recognizes that what he wants out of the business and what his parents want out of the business, they're just very different. And I understand that in his mind, he says, well, if I get this job, I'll take the pressure off of them. But the reality of it is, is that the fact that he's now bringing this up to me for the first time when his parents aren't around shows me that he's worried about leaving them behind. Ultimately, this is the character-defining moment part of the interview. A few weeks ago, I gave Chandler a $16,000 budget to renovate the restaurant at the food court. And I wanted to see, number one, how responsible was he gonna be with my money? How creative was he going to be with the money that he was given? And did he actually take it to the next level and make it better than I expected? Chandler doesn't realize that basically what he's about to show me is one of the steps of his interview. Holy Moses. Hey. What? What's going What's on? Hello? Look at this place. <laughs> You're like all over the place now. Everywhere. I also love the video. Because mm -hmm. I now feel like I know who you are. Oh my gosh, is she on the Food Network? <laughs> it looks. Looks good. Unbelievable, don't it you really think? It really does. This is like the biggest sign in the mall now. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, is. It's huge. So you changed the menu board. Yes. So we condensed everything down to just the most popular items. Hey! <laughs> Doing all right, Mark? Everything good? Doing well, man. Look at your mall project that worked out. <laughs> this is what you meant to do the first time. <laughs> Let me tell you the reason that I came here. Not so long ago, uh, Chandler applied for a job with my organization. And I thought to myself, you know, the best way to interview somebody for a job is to actually go hang out with oh them. Oh, my a while. gosh. Really? <laughs> It became more clear to me through the interview process that he cares more about you than he does himself. You applied for a job, there's your job offer. I can't believe you did that. You planned this from the start? Totally. <laughs> I think you had a great interview. It's your choice whether you want to take it or not. Come here, buddy. Give me up. Listen, we got to worry about this, OK? <laughs> Whatever you want to do is fine with us. I mean, this is a dream opportunity for me. It's a win-win. I'd love to take your offer. <laughs> hey, baby. You rock, Marcus Lemonis. Thank you. <laughs> this is just the beginning for an amazing future for Lyles. 
and I'm happy just to be a part of it. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Safe travels. <laughs> that is so cool, son. I'm so proud of you. The definition of an entrepreneur is somebody that has the willingness to try things and the strength to understand that failure is an option. But more importantly, the guts and the courage to get up and try again. Are you that person? What's my value? Are you asking me that? No, I know what it is. And that so confidence is what I love about you. The Profit, all new Tuesdays, 10 Eastern. CNBC, get yours.